He obtained his bachelor's degree at uh, Westminster College in Missouri and his MD degree at Harvard Medical School. And his medical residency training was here in the city at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Um, his endocrine training was at NIH. He has served on the uh, tenure medical faculties of John Hopkins University, the University of Buffalo, and um, of course, Albany Medical College. He was a Department of Medicine chair at Albany for 10 years, and he has been a member of uh, 12 U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs Research and Clinical Com Committees in Washington, D.C., having served multiple NIH committees and uh, was a member for six years of the extramural review panel for the um, Chernobyl uh, Tissue Bank of the European Union. He has co-authored uh, uh, more than 300 research publications, largely dealing with the molecular basis of the actions of thyroid hormone. And he has co-edited four scientific textbooks. He has served as editor of two scientific journals, is currently on the editorial boards of five journals, and is a um, subspecialty editor of the uh, faculty of 1000, or F1000 Prime for endocrinology. Um, he has served in elected offices of the American Board of Internal Medicine, the American College of Physicians, and the American Thyroid Association. Along with Dr. Uh, Shaker A. Musa, he co-discovered the cell surface receptor for thyroid hormone analogs on integrin alpha V beta 3 and co-founded Nanopharmaceuticals LLC. Um, in addition to that, he is a beloved attending of mine. Um, I trained at Albany Med. Um, I had a wonderful experience um, while I was out there and Dr. Davis um, was always such an approachable and um, wisdom filled faculty member, which we all really enjoy just being around. Um, so without further ado, take it away, Dr. Davis. Thanks very much for that uh, long introduction, Maria. It was it was a uh, uh, a very enjoyable educational experience to have you with us uh, in uh, the training training program here. Uh, I also saw Terry Davies' uh, name crop up on the list of people possibly sitting in on this. And if you are uh, listening, Terry, hi from Pepper. As you heard from uh, Maria, I, I, I uh, was the co-founder with, <clears throat> with Shakur Musa of the Albany College of Pharmacy of Nanopharmaceuticals LLC. This company is developing a family of anti-cancer agents based on the uh, structure and actions of, of Tetrac, tetrahydrothyrocytic acid, a uh, thyroid hormone analog, which was thought to be relatively uh, inactive. I want to take some basic science observations and convert them into possible clinical uh, <clears throat> implications and overtones for you in the course of this talk. I think you're familiar with the structures certainly of, of T4 as Synthroid, it's the most commonly prescribed uh, drug in the, in the United States. It's a diphenyl ether with an alanine uh, side chain. And you all know that T3 inside the cell is the most active form of thyroid hormone. And, the T4, insofar as the inside of cells is concerned, is a pro-hormone. It doesn't do much inside the cell except be converted at the, at the cell surface into uh, T3, uh, which, as you can see, is missing the 5', five prime iodine and is a, a super active uh, 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 hormone. Tetrac is also shown on this slide. And as you can see, it's, it looks like T4, except it's missing the alanine side chain. It's, uh, we've taken, <coughs> nature and we have taken off uh, the amino group and the carbon so that we have just a thyroacetic thyro acid. As far as the cell surface receptor that we've described is concerned, T4 and Tetrac are super active there and T3 is not a, a significant ligand. When we talk about genomic actions of thyroid hormone, we're talking about, uh, as I suggested, T4 being converted to T3 at the cell surface, uptake of T3, migration of T3 to the, uh, to the nucleus where it binds to thyroid hormone response elements, <coughs> where in conjunction with uh, thyroid hormone receptor, nuclear thyroid hormone receptors, TRs, 
uh, it binds to thyroid hormone response elements, TRE shown in this slide, and uh, leads to a variety of, uh, of, um, of expression of genes that uh, are summarized very briefly at the base of this slide. Uh, T3 uh, <clears throat> regulates uh, expression of specific genes, a, a wide variety of them that uh, are critical to cell homeostasis. <clears throat> genes uh, whose products are important to protein turnover and genes, uh, and um, uh, it also uh, controls uh, cell respiration at the level of the mitochondria. Look what happened here when we found that thyroid hormone as T4 primarily could work at the cell surface. Things became much more complicated uh, for, for us. And I've summarized the potential and real actions of, uh, of T4 particularly and Tetrac uh, at the base of this uh, slide, the lower left-hand corner. <clears throat> T4 at the cell, acting at the cell surface, controls some very specific protein trafficking. For example, TR beta 1 is driven from the cytoplasm of the nucleus by T4 acting at the cell surface. ER alpha, P53, critical to, um, uh, <clears throat> to apoptosis, uh, is also driven in the nucleus from the cell surface by a non genomic action of T4. Serine phosphorylation of nuclear proteins occurs. That includes. Uh, receptors for other small hormone molecules, specific gene transcription, hundreds of genes. Uh, the transcription of hundreds of genes is controlled from the cell surface by thyroid hormone, and I'll mention some of those to you further as we move through this topic. Activity of ion transporters, such as the sodium proton exchanger, sodium potassium ATP is the sodium pump, and the calcium pump also control uh, from <clears throat> their activity control from uh, the uh, cell surface at the integrin receptor. And then surprisingly, mitochondrial respiration can be controlled in part from the cell surface because amongst the genes controlled by T4 acting at its cell surface receptor are ATP, aces, ATP synthases uh, that are critical to the generation of, uh, of, of ATP in mitochondria. And uh, it, all of this material is reviewed in a paper that's coming out in January, uh, at, uh, mentioned at the base of this slide. Now, integrins. We're not talking about integrins in practice ordinarily, but perhaps we should think about them. They do hold tissues together. They do communicate with extracellular matrix uh, proteins. Uh, they do talk to uh, receptors on, their, on the cells on which they occur, as well as on nearby cells. What you see here is a cartoon uh, from the Bruce Albert, one of the Bruce Albert texts uh, of, an, of an integrin. And uh, you can see they're made up of, <clears throat> of two, uh, two proteins. So they're heterodimeric proteins uh, bound together at the, the jaws of the head. And you see that at the top of this, uh, of this cartoon. And then at the bottom of the cartoon, you see some feet. And these are inside the cell. 80% of this of the integrins uh, molecule is outside the cell and is interacting with other integrins, uh, with the receptors on the cell surface, including uh, uh, the epidermal growth factor receptor, including VEGF receptor, FGF receptor. Uh, this protein, these proteins really are talkative uh, and by physical interactions, uh, uh, are able to allow cells to communicate with one another, and they also whole contribute to the ability of tissues to hang together. And look at this. This is a, a marvelous uh, uh, report by <clears throat> Amin Arnaud from the Mass General 20 years ago, looking at the X-ray crystallography of, of, of integrins. And what you see is that these are infinitely plastic molecules and uh, they can extend themselves and that's so-called activated form or they can fold over in a variety of complete or incomplete ways that expose or do not expose cell surface receptors that allow them to interact with other cells and with extracellular matrix proteins. I'll also show you at the end of the talk that radiotherapy changes the configuration of this and that Tetrac also can, changes, can change the configuration of integrin alpha V beta 3, the specific integrin 
that is um, relevant to thyroid hormone. Some studies that an x-ray crystallographer, <coughs> a friend of ours, Vivian Cody did, <coughs> excuse me, 15 years ago, really characterized the receptor very, very neatly. It is a tight fit uh, for T4 and for tetrac containing molecules uh, into a binding site, which is made up of components of, um, of, al of integrin alpha V and integrin beta three. There are 24, 25 integrins, and only one of them has a thyroid hormone receptor. So integrin alpha V beta three is on the cell surface. And if about 20 years ago was shown by Shankar Musa and others in our group uh, to contain a, um, some small molecule receptors. Those included receptors for resveratrol, for testosterone, and importantly, from my standpoint, for thyroid hormone. The affinity <coughs> of T4 uh, for uh, integrin alpha V beta 3 is high. It is, T T4 is the principal ligand and it has a KD of 10 to the minus 10 molar. T3 has a, a much lower affinity, a log lower, uh, and uh, T3 does not function significantly at the cell surface. If you use large concentrations of T3 in laboratory studies, why well, you can get the integrin to change its behavior, uh, but under, under uh, physiologic circumstances, it's T4, which is controlling the message generation uh, from alpha V beta three. Generous expression of integrin alpha V beta three is restricted to four types of cells. Endothelial cells, and these are rapidly dividing endothelial cells. Resting endothelial cells are, don't have much in the way of activated uh, alpha V beta three. Vascular smooth muscle cells, tumor cells critically, critically uh, act, express a lot of alpha V beta three and it's activated. Osteoclasts also <clears throat> express this in fairly large quantities. I'm not gonna talk about that today. And a non-cell platelets also retain some of the alpha V beta three from the megakaryocyte plasma membrane. And so the T4 can act on platelets to change platelet behavior. There are some executive functions of the integrin. As I mentioned, it talks to other receptors. It talks to the VEGF receptor. That's the <coughs> vascular endothelial growth factor receptor. The FGF, the fibroblast growth factor receptor, the platelet derived growth factor, PDGF receptor, the epidermal growth factor receptor, <coughs> and the IGF receptor all uh, can have uh, messages generated in them uh, by uh, communications uh, with alpha V beta 3. The thyroid hormone receptor thus has uh, the potential. Uh, for influencing of these, uh, these various receptors that I've listed on this slide. It was desirable once we had uh, found this, uh, this receptor to try and develop molecules that worked exclusively at the receptor and not at other thyroid hormone, not elsewhere in the cell, for example, at mitochondria or in the cell nucleus at, at, at TR. And so uh, <clears throat> we, did a through a variety of, of, of studies, came up uh, with uh, modifications of, of T4 and of TETRAC that uh, enabled us to have a molecule that would work primarily at the outer, uh, at the uh, out at the plasma membrane uh, uh, and at the receptor for thyroid hormone. We ether bonded thyroid hormone analogs via the outer ring hydroxyl to uh, <clears throat> polylactate co-glycolic acid, PLGA, or to polyethylene glycol, PEG. And by putting this long string uh, <clears throat> of carbon molecules or of lactate <clears throat> and glycolic acid molecules uh, on uh, T4 or, or, or Tetrac, we reduced the amount of, uh, of uh, of thyroid hormone analogs that got into the cells and they could not enter the nucleus at all. So we did not have to worry about actions of T3 being at all interfered with by what we were uh, developing at the plasma membrane. So we had a new family of thyroid hormone analogs that act primarily, uh, almost exclusively at the cell surface. Here are the, uh, uh, the structures. I won't say too much about them. The 
uh, and that nano tetrac uh, we've uh, uh, published a fair amount on that you can see uh, at the <coughs> at the upper right hand uh, 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 margin uh, of this uh, of this slide that uh, we have uh, tetrac there uh, you can see the acetic acid uh, off the inner 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 ring drifting to the right and you see PLGA polylactate cloglycolic acid uh, to the left uh, and, and at the bottom of the slide you see another thyroid hormone analog uh, this one is uh, tetrac as P by P by tet, and we have two tetracs here, one at each end of a molecule of polyethylene glycol. And what we were doing here was to try to change the affinity, not only to reduce the uptake, uh, the inter intracellular, uh, uh, <clears throat> the internalization of the thyroid hormone molecules we were working with, uh, but also to uh, improve the affinity uh, of the tetrac uh, for the cell surface binder. And then finally, the, uh, the, the drug that we are taking into the clinical arena next February, uh, FB fluorobenzyl uh, PMT is, is shown here. And what we have uh, is uh, on the left-hand uh, portion of the slide, we have, uh, we have tetrac bound to a 36-carbon variant of polyethylene glycol, and then a fluorobenzyl group on the other side. This provides some tension for the bind on the on the binding of the tetrac and has really Im improved the affinity uh, of uh, of a tetrac containing drugs <coughs> for uh, uh, for the receptor on tumor cell surfaces. Here we see some medullary thyroid carcinoma car carcinoma cells. At the top in the top section you see a a, a, a red dye CICY3 labeled uh, form of uh, uh, of tetrac. Which has been unmodified tetrac, except to have the uh, uh, the stain added to it, and you can see there's redness throughout the nucleus. If we look at the bottom part of the slide, we see NDAT, one of the molecules that I showed you previously, the modified tetrac. You can see that the nuclei are black. There's virtually no um, uh, NDAT that's getting into the nucleus of these uh, uh, cells, and that's exactly what we wanted. Certainly, there is some. Uh, uh, there, is, <clears throat> there is plenty, plenty of dye at the cell surface and some in the cytoplasm. So let's, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about thyroid hormone and human tumor cell proliferation in vitro and in xenografts. Early studies, we did, looked at uh, T4 and physiologic concentrations of free T4 and breast cancer proliferation. And what we see here in the top panel of this uh, slide, uh, is we compare estrogen and physiologic concentrations, estradiol, and uh, T4 and, uh, and physiologic free concentrations. 10 to the minus seven molar T4 generates 10 to the minus 10 molar free T4 uh, in this uh, particular system. And what you can see is that uh, there, as, as you work, as we work through the uh, dose response curve here, we see that there is an increase in proliferation uh, uh, of these MCF7 cells, these are uh, these are es <coughs> estrogen receptor alpha containing cells, and you can uh, uh, certainly see that by by 24 hours, working at physiologic concentrations of uh, of, uh, of T4 and of estrogen, we see uh, very uh, pronounced uh, increases in in proliferation. As I mentioned to you earlier, uh, in a in, in a postmenopausal woman without estrogen being present, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the possibility that T4 may be stimulating breast cancer uh, was of interest to us. Uh, and uh, then we, we, took a, we took a look at how, uh, of how the estrogen receptor is activated, that is it's phosphorylated uh, by, MAP, by MAP kinase. And we found that thyroid hormone was capable as T4 Thyroid hormone ST4 was capable of turning on MAP kinase and serine phosphorylating the estrogen receptor. Uh, <clears throat> we showed that uh, ICI and, and, and PD uh, inhibitors of MAP, MAP kinase uh, significantly uh, inhibit uh, the actions of, uh, of T4 on breast cancer proliferation. So the, the moral of this slide is that T4 and physiologic free concentrations can stimulate 
ER positive breast cancer cell proliferation, and that at least in part, the action is, uh, is re involves ER and serine phosphorylation, ER. Here's thyroid hormone and proliferation of human lung cancer cells, two different kinds of cells, small cell and non-small cell <coughs> now, cancer cells. And these are uh, the cells, are, uh, the proliferation is measured by proliferating cell nuclear antigen, PCNA, uh, 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 immuno, immuno staining. And what you can see at the base of the slide is that uh, uh, thymidine incorporation and, uh, and PCNA, uh, uh, as uh, detected by immunostaining, are both increased uh, by T4. T3 in supraphysiologic concentrations can do it too, but these are never achieved. These concentrations are never achieved uh, in, um, uh, in, uh, in uh, patients. Here's medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. And what we see here is that uh, uh, we're looking now just at tetrac, the effect of tetrac, and you can see the tetrac really tunes down uh, the, um, uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, proliferation of medullary carcinoma of thyroid cells. And the uh, tetrac either is un unmodified or, is, or as, a, 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 as one of the nanoparticles that I showed you earlier, very capable of tuning down cell proliferation of this particular uh, uh, cancer. And uh, I can tell you uh, material not presented on the slide that T4 stimulates, further stimulates uh, the uh, proliferation of these cells uh, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have pancreatic uh, CA, a xenograph in, uh, in, in uh, uh, immunocompromised uh, 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 mice. And what we're looking at is uh, in, in vivo, uh, immunologic scanning, uh, uh, scanning of, uh, of xenografts of uh, MPANC-96 uh, uh, luciferase uh, cells uh, that are pancreatic CA. And you can see on the left side and the, of this uh, panel, you can see that these are huge. Uh, these tumors have, have, uh, have uh, modified, have grown uh, uh, dramatically over the course of, uh, of three weeks uh, in uh, four different uh, locales in the, on the, uh, the, the ventral surface, ventral trunk uh, of these mice. And if we look at nanotetrac uh, administered once a week systemically uh, to, uh, or in this particular case, in the, in, in the tumor, you can see that there's been a, uh, a substantial decrease uh, in the size of the tumors. Here's glioblastoma, a, a dreadful tumor. We've all had uh, 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 either patients or, or acquaintances or know of, uh, of public figures, uh, a couple of senators uh, who uh, succumbed to glioblastoma multiforme. And here, what we're looking at is FBPMT, the fluorobenzo uh, form of tetrac that I mentioned to you earlier and showed you. We're looking at its effect on glioblastoma xenografts uh, in uh, immunocompromised mice. And what you can see here in the left hand, uh, in the left hand upper uh, and, <coughs> and lower panels is a, if a very substantial effect of FBPMT on the size of these uh, xen xenografts uh, compared to the control. The control is the black, of course, it's the black uh, column here. And what we have in the top part of the slide is tumor weight uh, after, uh, after three to four weeks. The bottom of the slide, we have <clears throat> a, a, a live cell monitoring luminescent uh, uh, tumor cells that uh, we can uh, look at and quantitate. And if you look at the right-hand portion of the slide, you're looking at three weeks after stopping the drug the tumor has not relapsed. And uh, it, it's, we, were, we were stunned just to, uh, to, to see this. And, and of course, we we're obviously uh, liked to see this, uh, this, this, this kind of information. Apoptosis, uh, very remarkably induced uh, in these cells uh, by, uh, the, by FB, PMT. 
In addition, you can see from this, from this, the small size of the tumors, there is cleanup occurring in uh, of these tumors, and the macrophage-based phagocytotic cleanup of uh, debris of apoptotic cells uh, goes on in the presence of FBPMT. In other words, we don't poison macrophages with this uh, cell. Normal macrophages get in there and, in fact, pick up the debris and remove it. So tetrac-containing anti-cancer agents show <clears throat> a fairly remarkable efflocytosis uh, proceeding at the uh, sites. So what are the genes that are affected uh, by uh, integrin, by, uh, by uh, uh, nanoparticulate uh, tetrac uh, acting at uh, integrin alpha V beta three? There is strenuous downregulation of, uh, of, <coughs> of proto-oncogenes. 21 out of 23 differentially regulated proto-oncogenes. Eight out of nine cyclones that control <coughs> the cell cycle also downregulated uh, by uh, uh, tetrac-containing uh, 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 molecules, an uh, hormone analogs that we've developed. Apoptosis inhibitors that are, are innate tumor protective agents, things we don't like to see. Uh, secreted by or produced by tumors. There is down regulation of apoptosis inhibitors like XIAP, the X-linked inhibitor of apoptosis and MCL1, upregulation of pro-apoptotic genes such as caspase 2 and BCL2L14, down regulation of catenin genes, upregulation of, of KIB1, a nuclear inhibitor of catenin activity. Again, uh, it's something that's highly relevant to, to apoptosis. And then there's also, uh, we have in our bodies uh, <coughs> certain genes such as thrombospondin, which inhibit rather than stimulate angiogenesis. And there's upregulation by tetrac containing drugs of the natural thrombospondin angiogenesis inhibitor and downregulation of, uh, of several uh, endothelial cell uh, regulators. Now, I mentioned to you that the cell respiration is supposed to be part of, uh, uh, supposed to be limited to T3 acting directly at uh, the mitochondria. And in fact, we, we were very surprised recently in, uh, in a variety of studies looking at, <coughs> looking at ATP synthase genes to see that a, that a half dozen ATP synthase genes that are found in the mitochondria are in fact downregulated uh, by the, <coughs> by uh, p by tap or one of the uh, tetrac containing drugs with uh, which we work. And then we looked at, a, at some other specific genes. The, the epidermal growth factor receptor, it's, been a, it's a target of, of multiple um, uh, anti-cancer anti -cancer drugs. And what you can see here is that it's, it matters whether it's tetrac or nanotetrac, modified tetrac. In the case of thyroid hormone analogs, nanotetrac tunes down uh, by 50% EGFR <coughs> expression, uh, whereas uh, uh, tetrac, unmodified tetrac, doesn't. Uh, here is uh, thrombospondin. Uh, I mentioned it to you earlier, an angiogenesis, a naturally occurring angiogenesis inhibitor, and that's turned on by both tetrac and nanotetrac. The expression of the gene is turned on by both tetrac and nanotetrac. Here's the X-linked inhibitor of apoptosis, XIAP I mentioned to you. Uh, this is a defense mechanism of cancer cells, which we want to obviate, we want to shut down. And in fact, uh, tetrac does that, acting at the cell surface receptor on integrin alpha V3. And then here is a pro-apoptotic -apo, pro molecule. Tetrac doesn't turn it on, but modified tetrac does. So we can see there's differential uh, uh, actions of thyroid, <coughs> uh, uh, of thyroid hormone analogs, tetrac specifically, depending on how it has been uh, uh, structured or, uh, or if it's unmodified. Uh, and we can see that it's desirable to modify uh, the, um, the tetrac molecule in certain ways in order to broaden the base of uh, the spectrum of genes that are subject to differential regulation by tetrac. Here are a set of driver genes or oncogenes that are downregulated by, <clears throat> uh, by uh, P by tap. Again, one of the 
to track containing drugs I showed you earlier. And driver genes or oncogenes are, are, are genes that when, when, uh, <clears throat> when mutated are capable of inducing and supporting uh, tumor cell growth. And uh, included uh, uh, here are some signal transducing uh, drugs in the, AK, in the PI3 kinase AKT pathway uh, and a, a variety of other RAS genes uh, that are um, uh, uh, all tuned down uh, by, um, by tetrac containing agents. Now, we were stunned when we found that program cell death ligand one PL, <coughs> PDL1 gene expression is also affected by thyroid hormone. Here we are <clears throat> looking at uh, some colon carcinoma cells, HT29 cells. And uh, what you can see here is that the T4 at physiologic concentrations really turns on PDL1. Now, this is uh, not desirable because this blocks uh, the human immune response to, uh, to, to cancer cells. And we can see that we can block this effect of. Uh, of, of thyroid, <coughs> of T4 with um, a tetrac containing uh, agent. Um, so what this means is that uh, physiologic levels of circulating thyroid hormone in some, in, in, in some, of, uh, some of our patients may be in fact be blocking the host immune response uh, pathway that features uh, PDL1. Now, what about non-malignant cells? Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> when they're exposed to tetrac-containing uh, drugs. Well, here's an, ex here's an example. We're looking at fibroblasts here, kidney fibroblasts, two different uh, kinds, 293T and CV1 cells. And you can see that uh, these are, these are uh, uh, <clears throat> millimolar, <clears throat> micromolar concentrations of, uh, of tetrac, uh, generally 10 to 100 times greater concentrations than we use uh, in our preclinical pre xenograft studies, showing no effect at all uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, <coughs> non-tumor cells. And we've looked at a variety of cells uh, this way. So that the, the uh, alpha V beta three integrant is not being expressed uh, very uh, aggressively in these mature, stable cells, and it's also not activated. Well, what about angiogenesis? If that uh, completes an overview of tumor cell proliferation in vitro and in xenografts. What about angiogenesis? Here is uh, the chick corio allantoic membrane model, the CAM model, uh, where we look at the chick, the growth of the uh, of <laughs> blood vessels in the eye of the, uh, of the chick. And what you can see is that phosphobuffered saline, the control in the upper left-hand corner, uh, produces a relatively modest angiogenesis. We look at T4 on the right, uh, and at this, uh, uh, this is 10 to the minus seven uh, molar, which is, uh, is 10 to the minus 10 molar free. And you can see it's very vigorous angiogenesis. <clears throat> And if we, uh, if we block uh, the effects of, uh, uh, of T4 with, in, a, in, a variety of, in a variety of ways, we can reduce this uh, effect. And we've done that uh, in the lower left-hand uh, corner of this, uh, this slide. Here we have uh, T4, T4 with, uh, bound to agarose, so it can't get into cells at all. And you can see that it's stimulating angiogenesis. So the T4 does not, is not getting into the cell uh, or T, T4 converted to T3 cannot get into the cell here. This is all action that is at the cell, the cell surface. And you can see compared to VEGF, the T4 is really pretty, pretty comparable. And uh, compared to FGF, fibroblast growth factor, uh, T4 may be even more vigorous in this particular, uh, in this particular uh, model sy uh, system. DIPA is diethylpropionic acid. It's another analog of, of thyroid hormone, and it, it does have a little uh, <coughs> a proangiogenic effect. 
the mechanisms by which uh, the thyroid hormones, iodothyronines, are proangiogenic are multiple. And these include a potentiation of the, of, uh, the activities of vascular growth factors, and that's uh, uh, VEGF, uh, FGF, BFGF, BFGF, PDGF, uh, EGF as well, and stimulation of endothelial cell migration and microtubule formation. All of these mechanisms are inhibited by nanotetrac and PBITAP, and more recently uh, by FMPMT. Here is a pancreatic tumor xenograft angiogenesis. And here we've treated the xenograft, we treated uh, the animals bearing the xenografts with systemic <coughs> NDAP. And what you can see is that, <coughs> excuse me, angiogenesis is reduced by 50% or more uh, by tetrac or tetrac containing the drugs. And here are microtubule formation. This is uh, comparing VEGF and, and, and tetrac. There's no thyroid hormone, uh, no T4 uh, in the system, just tetrac versus and, 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 uh, and VEGF. And what you, can, what you can see here is that the actions of VEGF are blocked very nicely by tetrac. The, 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 the white lines between colonies of endothelial cells are microtubules that are forming. And you can see there's a lot of microtubule generation in the controls of the left-hand slide, but with uh, a relatively high concentration of tetrac and VEGF on the right-hand side, we've lost many of the microtubules, the ability of the model to express the microtubules. All right, I've talked about tumor cells, xenografts, angiogenesis. Are there clinical correlates? Clinical correlates now. All of the other, what I've shown you is preclinical. Are there, are there clinical correlates of action of thyroid hormone analogs and the thyroid hormone receptor on integrin alpha V beta 3? Here's a study done by a colleague and collaborator of, of ours. Uh, uh, Alec Hirschberg's at the Cleveland Clinic. And this is in 2003. He looked at induction of hypothyroidism uh, <clears throat> with, uh, uh, with PTU uh, in, uh, in patients with far, far advanced glioblastoma. And what you see here is that the, the mildly hypothyroid patients and they, they're, uh, their TSHs were taken up to 15, no higher than 15 uh, by the PTU dosing, <coughs> lived uh, significantly longer uh, than the untreated patients. So this is uh, advanced relapsed glioblastoma, life expectancy three months, patients living a, a mean of, uh, of 10 months uh, with a little bit of hypothyroidism. Then Hirschberg and I, in a paper in The Oncologist in 2015, looked at uh, a couple of dozen patients with, uh, uh, with far advanced tumors. They completed their chemo chemotherapy. And these included uh, <clears throat> breast, glioblastoma, pancreatic CA, some sarcomas. And what we did here uh, was, to, uh, was to shut off T4 production altogether with methimazole in these patients and to administer T3 in physiologic quantities to maintain euthyroidism. So this is the state of euthyroid hypothyroxinemia uh, that uh, uh, can, can be induced. And what we saw here is a, also a, a, a pretty remarkable uh, increase uh, in, in, in survival time. The, the, mean, the mean survival time uh, was was increased uh, up up to 24 months from in patients who had three to five months of projected survival survival time, and uh, in those types of tumors that I mentioned to you, sarcoma, glioblastoma, pancreatic CA, breast uh, CA, then a variety of other clinical studies have come out uh, from other laboratories, uh, Massimo Cristofanelli at MD Anderson. Uh, reported that spontaneously hypothyroid breast cancer patients uh, live significantly longer at, uh, uh, in, in the MD Anderson experience 
uh, than did euthyroid. Tyrosine kinase inhibitor induced hypothyroidism is common uh, in, um, in a variety of cancers and, and, and uh, Schmiedinger et, et al. in Vienna have shown that TKI induced hypothyroidism significantly, <laughs> the, the side effect significantly prolongs life in patients with renal cell carcinoma. <laughs> And uh, in a variety of uh, uh, patients with head and neck cancers at the Cleveland Clinic, studied by Nelson, um, uh, induction of, of hypothyroidism that was a side effect of head and neck ir irradiation. The hypothyroid patients live significantly longer than did those uh, who were euthyroid. Let me tell you uh, a, a, a paper that is coming out. It's just come, just come out uh, uh, now from four US centers looked at uh, T4 administration for hypothyroidism in, 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 <clears throat> in patients with breast cancer and showed that uh, the, the, the patients who had T4 on board as a, uh, as a means of treating high hypothyroidism uh, had a more, appeared to have uh, more aggressive uh, tumors. Uh, than did uh, the uh, euthyroid individuals who were not receiving uh, exogenous thyroid hormone. I mentioned at the outset uh, that radiation affects uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, shape, the plasticity uh, of uh, the integrin that contains uh, the thyroid hormone uh, receptor. And here are some studies uh, done by John, uh, John, by radiation biologist John Leith, <coughs> who looked at uh, the effect of, of, of TETRAC on uh, radio sensitivity of uh, human glioblastoma cells. And what you can see in, in the, the, the black dots is the, the control uh, <coughs> U87 uh, glioblastoma cells. And uh, as the dose of radiation was increased, there was a, a loss of, of viability of the cells. And what you can see is in the, uh, in the open circles, when TETRAC was present, uh, there was a significant improvement uh, in radio sensitivity uh, of these uh, cells. And when John Leith looked at the shape of these cells and uh, at, at the shape of the integrin in these uh, cells, and it is, it is a, a very straightforward way of, of doing that. Uh, uh, he showed that radiation caused activation of uh, integrin alpha V beta three and that Tetrac prevented uh, that radiation effect. This was the reminder of what Leith did. And uh, this, what you see on the right is what happens with radiation induced uh, <clears throat> with uh, uh, with uh, radiation induced, uh, you see a radiation induced change in the shape uh, 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 of the uh, an extension of the integrin on the left hand side. You see what it looks like when uh, when uh, the uh, integrin uh, is exposed to tetrac and radiation. So I've covered now uh, some preclinical data and some clinical data that suggests that. The, there is, there is some, there's a need for some concern about the thyroid hormone receptor on the cell surface in cancer cells and in uh, rapidly dividing endothelial cells. Uh, a, a variety of questions uh, crop up and these have, all, have already occurred to UISM. What are the effects of incidental hypothyroidism on behavior of cancers? Well, as I've uh, indicated in the MD Anderson study and, the, and in some of the renal cell carcinoma uh, studies, incidental hypothyroidism seems to improve uh, duration of survival in, in certain cancers. What about the effects of incidental hyperthyroidism? This is not in, in cancer patients. This has not been looked at very carefully. There is some suggestion, these are isolated reports, however, that, that hyperthyroidism may in fact uh, be uh, an issue. Uh, the issue we would raise is not hy hyperthyroidism, but our, our free T4 levels, if they're upper in the upper uh, quartile of the normal range, might they be a permissive factor in the growth of, uh, uh, of, uh, of certain tumors? We have looked uh, uh, at uh, 
a, a variety of, of, of other functions uh, uh, of, of cells that are, are relevant to cancer, for example, uh, platelet uh, uh, coagulation, uh, and have shown that, uh, that T4 in low concentrations, in fact, causes platelets to agglutinate. And uh, <laughs> that may be an important uh, contributor to, to the formation of metastases and also, also to the possibility of complicating tumors with, uh, with uh, venous thromboembolism. And uh, there is uh, uh, some concern that, uh, that, 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 that we have that uh, perhaps some of the thromboembolic uh, uh, consequences of, of, uh, of uh, COVID-19 might in fact uh, be permitted uh, by high free T4 levels in patients who have a second disease other than uh, the, uh, 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 the viral infection. How aggressively uh, should you reduce thyroid hormone and hypothyroidism induced cancer if you believe if in thyroid hormone induced increase in cancer growth, uh, if you're concerned about this, for example, with TKIs? And that question has not been answered. Should we use unmodified uh, <coughs> triac or, or triac or tetriac? Triac, it turns out not to be very effective uh, here and not unexpectedly since T3 is not a terribly effective as a pro-tumor agent. Uh, unmodified, unmodified tetrac uh, gets into the cell nucleus where it may be converted, where it may act like T4 uh, and uh, be a, a very modest uh, uh, stimulator of, of tumor cell growth uh, via uh, TRs and other factors in the cell nucleus. So we don't look on unmodified tetrac and, and track right now as, uh, as particularly um, attractive options. Side effect profile of modified tetrac, we've looked very carefully via uh, contracts with outside um, uh, drug testing companies and uh, were, uh, were satisfied that uh, modified Tetrac uh, has a side effect profile that is uh, a very uh, low uh, profile. I'm sorry. One final uh, slide to, of, of results. You may have asked, well, you showed us, you've, you've shown us tumor cells. Uh, of a variety of sorts, but what about thyroid cancer? Is thyroid cancer stimulated by thyroid hormone? And here are FT, <coughs> FTC-236 cells, follicular thyroid carcinoma, well differentiated uh, form of thyroid carcinoma. And what you can see here is that uh, T4, in fact, uh, does stimulate these cells to proliferate uh, and uh, tetrac blocks uh, this effect. What this means uh, is, is, is a, a relatively small uh, bit, of, bit, of, bit of news. Most of these well-differentiated uh, uh, tumors are very TSH dependent and turning down TSH with uh, exogenous T4 works uh, very satisfactorily uh, to control cell growth. But in those patients in whom suppression of TSH has not worked, those differentiated, Molecular and papillary thyroid carcinoma cells that are well differentiated. If those cells are growing well on T4 and fully suppressed TSH, I think we can ask the question is it possible these are types of thyroid carcinoma cells which may be thyroid hormone dependent? In summary, alpha V beta 3 is an integrin that contains a cell surface receptor for T4. Uh, <clears throat> the receptor also binds other thyroid analogs, including T3, but not at physiologic concentrations, and <clears throat> binds tetrac. Tetrac and nanoparticulate tetrac inhibit agonist hormone actions at the receptor and are probes for contributions of the receptor uh, to various cancer syndromes. In vitro, T4 T3 act at the integrin, T3 and Superphysiologic concentrations to <coughs> activate MAP kinase and support tumor cell uh, proliferation and a variety, in a variety of tumor cells and to stimulate angiogenesis. Tetrac blocks these actions. 
acting via the cell surface receptor, nanoparticulate tetract coherently modulates expression of multiple genes relevant to tumor cell survival. Receptor initiated actions of thyroid hormone analogs also include modulation of crosstalk between the interin and nearby vascular growth factor receptors and crosstalk with nuclear hormone receptors such as ER alpha. So we're looking here at a complicated uh, system of, uh, of small molecule hormone uh, interactions in which uh, uh, estrogen, uh, thyroid hormone, and other factors uh, may in fact be, uh, and testosterone as well as we've shown, <clears throat> may in fact be contributing to the clinical behavior of cancers. A host of people have been involved in doing these studies. Shaka Musa uh, here in Albany, Hung Young Lin uh, for 15 years here in Albany and now in, in Taiwan. Uh, my spouse, now deceased, Faith Davis, uh, was uh, wholly involved in these studies from the beginning. Joel Berg, involved in describing the receptor. Uh, Gennady Glinsky is continuing to do gene expression work for us. Vivian Cody in Buffalo did the X-ray crystallography. Uh, Sandra and Chirpy uh, in Rome and Osnat Ashrafabi in Tel, Tel Aviv are continuing to do their own studies of thyroid hormone action on a variety of tumors. And then Alec Hirschberg's at the uh, Cleveland Clinic has done, <clears throat> has done some uh, very constructive clinical work uh, looking at uh, the possible uh, participation of thyroid hormone uh, in, uh, uh, in the behavior of a variety of, of, of cancers. With that, I've concluded my presentation and I appreciate your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. Um, this was a wonderful uh, talk. I would say that um, aside from just the exciting uh, data that you showed is um, um, a very provocative um, information for a lot of uh, clinicians, uh, disruptive and you know, kind of like the current uh, concept of, um, of thyroid hormone. And I have a lot of excitement and a lot of questions to ask, but I do want to give in the interest of time, some opportunities to some questions that arose um, in the chat. And then um, for those who want to raise your question, um, they're also um, you know, welcome to interrupt. Um, but um, uh, Amanda Leiter uh, asked uh, that you mentioned that T4 stimulates PDL1 expression. Do you know if hyperthyroidism may help with immune checkpoint inhibitor efficacy? So, uh, can you uh, she said, you mentioned that T4 stimulates yes. PDL1 expression. Do you know if hyperthyroidism may help with immune checkpoint inhibitor efficacy? I'm, I'm assuming that she might have meant hypothyroidism, but I'll let you go ahead and answer that. Yeah, so we have not, uh, we've only looked at the, uh, at the expression of, uh, of PDL1 in response to, uh, to T4 and to tetrac containing. Uh, uh, drugs. We have not looked at uh, the com the complete system of uh, <clears throat> of uh, uh, of uh, immune cells, lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, attacking uh, uh, tumors. Uh, so no, we I can't tell you uh, okay. whether or not the the immune response is in fact being uh, uh, being affected, um, being modulated. Thank you. There's a there's another physician, Dr. Rayfield, who asked if you have any primate data on the uh, uh, effect of tetrac in tumors. Uh, no, no, prime, no, no, no. Uh, we ha we have not done any xenographs in in prim in primates. All of all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we would have to be using uh, the primate uh, uh, tumor cells as as well. So we've been been, been studying immunocompromised mice in terms of, uh, uh, or or rats in terms of uh, uh, the xenografts. It's a good question, and 
would be would be worthwhile to have. Um, Dr. Levine mentioned that the twelve thirteen the twenty thirteen study of um, of block and replace in cancer is very intriguing. Intriguing, um, and have you, there been any follow up reports um, or centers that are adopting this approach in end stage cancers, um, referring to the utilization of uh, PTU methimazole to induce hypothyroidism and replacing with T3. Um, she wants to know if there have been follow-up reports or centers that are adopting this approach in end-stage cancer currently. Uh, a, a few uh, cancer centers uh, have adopted uh, uh, this, this approach, but um, it's very difficult for a cancer center, which is committed to killing cells, uh, to endorse a, uh, uh, a, 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 an approach uh, which is uh, uh, not, not very aggressive in, uh, in, in, in management. We, uh, the, we, we have right now about 100 patients around the world by being managed by telephone. Uh, in terms of uh, advice with dosing of methimazole and, uh, and T3. Uh, the, uh, an, anecdote, an interesting anecdote is that uh, the father of, uh, of uh, O.C. Asher Fabian in, in Tel Aviv had the glioblastoma of the brainstem, inoperable, was given two months to live. He was converted to euthyroid hypothyroxemia, lived five years and died of another disease. Oh, wow. So those kinds of anecdotes fly, but you know that's not the same as control study. Um, and one last question from the chat. Do you recommend use of liothyronine or T3 in replacement of TKI-induced hypothyroidism in cancer patients who have TKI, obviously, as opposed to using uh, standard levothyroxine? Uh, this uh, is being discussed now by the TKI renal cell carcinoma group in Vienna, uh, Schmiedinger. And uh, so we, we have not been involved in that uh, discussion uh, at, uh, at all. Certainly uh, looking at it from the outside, I would say that uh, when TKI induced um, hypo hypothyroidism occurs, based on uh, data from two centers now in, in RCC, it would make sense to seriously consider cytocytomel uh, as the replacement form of thyroid hormone. But it's hardly an ideal replacement dose. You have to give it twice a day, compliance is poor, and, uh, and you may not rid the patient of all of the symptoms. Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'm unsure if there's um, other people in the audience that would like to um, verbally express their questions. Now would be the time. I see like Jerry Davies there. Yeah. Hi, Pepper. Hi, um, Terry. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with my Zoom camera, but, okay. but uh, I enjoyed your talk tremendously. Thank you very much. It's very provocative. You know, there's quite a wide um, uh, d data a collection on hyperthyroidism and breast cancer. Uh, and it's been increasing in the literature. Yes. There, there's a recent paper suggesting a genetic association between breast cancer and hyperthyroidism, which would go against the idea of uh, thyroid hormone excess being the cause. But your suggestion or your, your examples of hypo thyroidism actually helping the outcome is really interesting. And I, I wondered if there'd been any serious trials in breast cancer patients. None that, none that I know of, Terry. It's, it, looks, it looks as though they really should. We, 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 know, we know of cancer centers in Ohio and, uh, and Georgia uh, that are, now have put uh, thyroid hypothyroxinemia <coughs> on the uh, on the blackboard as an option in end-stage tumor patients mm -hmm. nice. that, that's that's it and they haven't uh, specified the tumors involved breast cancer not specifically mentioned right and and you mentioned that you you'd done a side effect profile of this 
altered tetrac. Um, but it's a non-specific treatment, right? Are you not concerned that there are going to be side effects? I, I am concerned that there can be side effects. And what we've done in, in the clinical trial, uh, as we put together the, um, uh, the um, protocol for the clinical trial that will begin against the GBM at Yale in, uh, in February, what we've done is to say no, no surgery within the preceding three weeks because you're going to stop wound healing, uh, for example, uh, with uh, tetrac cont uh, containing uh, uh, drugs. Uh, there are other, uh, uh, there are possibly other platelet functions that uh, that uh, might be affected. But certainly, wound wound healing we're con we're concerned about. Uh, Otherwise, though, we've looked at the, 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 company, the two companies with which we've contracted for uh, to, to look at uh, side, side effects have looked at concentrations up to 60 fold, what we're, we're going to be using in, in people with, uh, with no effects on organ function, bone marrow, uh, 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 or conventional laboratory tests. Over how many weeks? I'm sorry. Over how many weeks was the was the test? Oh, yes, four weeks. Four weeks. Um, all right. I think I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of questions. I know that we are a little past 9:30. Um, so you had an impressive result there on um, medullary thyroid carcinoma cells. Has there been any thought? I mean, we don't have you know, for people who have you know metastatic or extensive disease in medullary thyroid carcinoma. Um, we don't really have much that would could induce really dramatic effects in regards to disease. Um, is there a thought about um, either after the GBM trial or um, uh, have you guys thought about introducing this uh, into medullary thyroid carcinoma as a potential treatment? Uh, it's it's been mentioned, but the uh, the uh, priorities. Uh, uh, are right now are listed as pancreatic CA and then uh, acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, and uh, then we will, if, if those work, obviously uh, it can be tried in, in other relatively uh, rare tumor, tumor uh, situations. And do you have any opinion about um, what we're doing with the TSH suppression and thyroid cancer in in terms of postmenopausal women versus premenopausal women, should we think differently about that, or um, kind of continue our conventional management? Uh, we're discussing this. Uh, it's it, there just is not enough in, not enough uh, in, information yet. Um, but yes, we're we're concerned about uh, uh, what. Uh, what uh, the what the loss of estrogen means uh, in uh, patients who are getting getting thyroid hormone? Great, thank you so much, Dr. Davis. It was a pleasure. Um, I think uh, a lot of us really enjoyed it, and um, and thanks so much again. Wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate this invitation. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.